recent Pew survey indicates that 70% of people who never attend church or seldom attend church believe that there's conflict between science and faith. And you have to wonder if those doubts about the compatibility of science and Christianity is the reason why they're not interested in attending church. I'm joined today by Barry Wynn, who is a Christian and a chemical engineer to help us make sense of doubts. Uh, Barry, yes. has there ever been a situation or a scientific discovery uh, that has caused you to have doubts about your Christian faith? Fuzz, I can't think of any discovery that has caused me to have doubts, but there is an issue which um, could be considered scientific or even philosophical that has um, disturbed me at times. And that is a whole idea that God can be interested in me as an individual. Mm. And for that matter, every other individual on the planet and hear our prayers and know everything that we think. I mean, didn't David in Psalm 8 ask that question when he looked in the heavens, yes. right? What is man that you're mindful of? Yes, him? indeed. And, you know, today there are over 7 billion people on the planet. And the, uh, the Population Reference Bureau has estimated that over 100 billion people have been born on the earth since the beginning of humanity. And to think that God knows every one of them as well as their thoughts is just very difficult for me to get my mind around. I mean, we as Christians believe God is omniscient. He knows everything. And that's pretty easy to say. But to try to comprehend that is, is beyond human ability. And of course, I think in the end, we need to remember that we are finite. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that have been revealed are for us to, to know and do and obey. So we, we don't know everything, and we need to trust that God is indeed omniscient. Uh, and that's really how I, I deal with that. But I was also helped um, perhaps get some insight into the issue uh, from this whole concept of different dimensions. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Hugh Ross speaks about the fact that there are more scientists believe there's more than just three dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we know the fourth dimension time, and there are several more dimensions that, that, that physicists believe are, are real. Uh, and the fact that God created not only the material universe, but time itself. We know that time had a beginning. God is outside of time. Therefore, he's not constrained by time like we are. And that was a helpful thought. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a well-known book, uh, Flatlands, by, um, by Ellen Abbott, yeah. who, who examined um, what a, a, a two-dimensional life would be like. And it, it discusses interactions with a one-dimensional life and a three-dimensional life. And as we think, okay, a, four dim a fourth dimensional being, obviously outside of time, have a great deal more appreciation of reality um, than we do in our three dimensions. So those ideas sort of help me sort of mm -hmm. uh, think about it and rationally. So what would you say to somebody in general who's experiencing doubt, regardless of whether it's scientific or philosophical or theological? What what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is a Christian who's struggling with doubt or who is maybe a seeker, but because of doubts, they just can't embrace Christianity? Well, I think it's important to take our doubts seriously, but intellectually, honestly, not just use doubt as a sort of subterfuge to avoid mm -hmm. dealing with the ultimate issue of, of, of who is God and what is my responsibility in, in his eyes. But... You know, God has revealed himself in two ways, through scripture and also the book of nature. And we should study what he's told about himself, revealed about himself in both Revelation. And there are many answers to our problems in scripture and that I would encourage a person to look at. Um, but I, I would encourage a person to address their doubts. Has there ever been a source of doubt uh, that has been scientific in nature, that maybe is more philosophical and theological in nature that you've experienced? Yes, I think there is one which many Christians experience and which also many non-believers consider it to be an obstacle to belief in God, and that is what we call natural evil. Mm. Um, and, you know, we, I can understand how human evil is, is readily explained by the fall. Mm -hmm. Natural evil uh, could possibly in part be explained by the fall, but not, 
I'm not t totally satisfied. Uh, and by natural does. evil, you mean earthquakes, hurricanes, natural disasters. Absolutely, yes. And um, whenever we see, as Christians, we see people suffering as a result of that, we run to them to help them. Mm -hmm. and, and Christians are usually at the forefront of helping meet human suffering and need when there's been a disaster. Yet people often ask, well, where was God? Why didn't he stop this? And what I found most helpful is to see how Jesus answered a similar issue as recorded in Luke chapter 13 in the first five verses. Uh, it was brought to Jesus' attention that Pilate had mingled the blood of some Galileans with their sacrifices in the temple. Well, that's human evil. And in Jesus, in responding, said, well, you think those Galileans were any worse sinners than anybody else? Well, no. And, and his implied answer is, the question you should be asking is, when you see a disaster like this is, well, where do I stand before God? Have I repented of my sins? That is the question to be asking, not why did God allow this? And likewise, he referred to a tower in Siloam that had mm -hmm. fallen over and, and killed some people. Now, we don't know why it fell over. It's very possible it was an earthquake. Um, it's, it's a seismic area mm -hmm. in the Middle East, and uh, quite possibly that he, he was addressing a natural, what we consider a natural evil there. Mm -hmm. And there was the same answer. You know, the question is not why, but what about me? Mm -hmm. You know, am I reconciled with God? Am I ready to meet my maker? Mm -hmm.